Fine, thank you. Bobby, I, I still think you're wrong. About the cafeteria special? Don't be evasive. Oh, Holly, I told you I don't want to go to that quarter man party because I don't think Luke would have liked it. Yeah, but that's absurd. We can't go on doing what we think Luke would want us to do. I know that, but he did have principles. And he had things that he believed in. And I don't think there's anything wrong with carrying that on. Oh, of course not, but Luke was an individual, in one of a kind. He did things his way because he believed in himself and what he was. You and I have, have different beliefs. We're not Luke. I know that. It's just that sometimes it's so hard to let go. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I feel that if I don't think about him all the time, then maybe someday I won't think about him at all. And that really frightens me. Well, what would I do? You? You're the girl who was telling me to get on with my life. Now you're frightened about what to do with yours? Hi, hey, you're a Spencer. You just have to live life to its fullest. That's right. <laughs> okay, well, you can prove it to me and go to the quarter men's party. Oh, Holly, I don't know. Ruby just got served with an eviction notice, and she's going to be moving in with Jesse. I mean, I have so many things that I have to do in order to make room for her. Lord knows when I'd ever have time to go shopping to buy a dress. Or we could just drop by Delphina's. Ah, uh, don't even mention her name in my presence. I'm never going back to that shop again. Well, I've got a good idea. Let's go to New York this afternoon. To New York? What for? Shopping. We can try on gowns in all the best stores in New York, and we won't stop until we find the two most smashing. You're crazy. <laughs> you know that. Are you with me? I don't know. Oh, come on. It would be a good idea. What's wrong? <laughs> well, good day, ladies. You two look like you're uh, plotting something. We were just wondering what a girl has to do to capture your heart. Oh. Well, then you're in luck. I am? Mm-hmm. I just got word that Celia, my fiancé, will definitely be in town for the party. You can ask her. Oh. Well, I can't wait. She's a very lucky lady. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm a luckier guy to have her. Well, hello, Bobby. Hello, Holly. Uh, Grant, could I see you for a minute? Sure. Okay. Uh, will you excuse me? <laughs> He's really sweet, isn't he? You know, Holly, I think I may take you up on that offer. I would love to go on a shopping spree with you in New York. Terrific. And while we're there, I think I'm going to give David Arlen a call. I think it would be very interesting to have an escort to that quarter man, shouldn't it? Now, I will do the talking. Hey, how you doing? Uh, fine. Uh, you know this man? Well, I, uh, you know his face. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not too good on names. It's, uh, uh, never mind. I'm conducting an investigation here. Now, can you recall if this man was here two weeks ago on a Friday night? Boy, Friday. Friday's pretty busy around here. I was drinking... I straight... told you. Hey, ah, uh, wait a minute. I remember. <laughs> You, he got so bombed that night, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, really. You're sure this is the man? Oh, yeah, he's pretty much a regular around here. Remember what time he left? Hmm. Before nine, I'm sure. It wasn't very late. He, uh, took a bottle with him, so he's going back to his room. And you're sure that this is the man? Oh, positive. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's how I didn't get you into uh, trouble. Well, that... Before you go getting too carried away with yourself, let's go through your story once more. We want to be sure of all the facts now, don't we? With pleasure. I left here with a bottle. And uh, I took a shortcut in the alley by in back of the warehouse that we just passed. And I got the real crazy idea that I wanted to make a phone call. Of course, I was very drunk, as I told you. Thank <laughs> you. 
when you need them. Where's the one in you know? See who's listening to you. Nobody cares. me to the tank and that's why I spent the night in jail like I told you now are you gonna let me go now white pal let's go oh. well you certainly are perky today it shows huh uh-huh yeah Celia's coming back tomorrow ah uh, and you have missed her oh you, you bet when she's around everything just seems to sparkle well, you are sparkling already. Am I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad she's going to be here for the party. Oh, yes. You know, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. Hmm. Really, what is going on with the quarter man? Mm, what do you mean? Well, don't you think it's a little bit of an odd time to be throwing a party? I mean, in lieu of everything that's happening? Yeah. I guess it's their prerogative if they want one. I I'm sorry. It probably sounds like I'm... Crying or no, something. It's just no, that every time I try to talk to Monica about it, she disappears. And frankly, I'm really concerned. Is everything okay? It seems to be. At least Lila's having a ball. I've never seen anyone get such a kick out of planning a party. I mean, I'm sure Edward and Alan are very happy to see her busy again. Yeah, they cripe a bit, but I think they like it. Edward especially. He loves seeing Lila back in action. Well, he's very fond of her. Yes. <laughs> They are an eccentric bunch, those Quartermains. Something going on every minute. Mm. <sighs> Do you suppose Celia's going to be able to handle all this hullabaloo? Oh, are you kidding? She'll love it. She's a Quartermain, remember? Oh, that's of course. <laughs> well, I was just wondering if you knew... Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Hello, darling. Man. Hi, Lee. Well, I'd better get back. Well, not on my account. Oh, no, no. Duty calls. Uh, have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye, Grant. He's a nice young man, isn't he? Yes, yes, he is. I was just hoping that maybe he could help me figure out what this party thing's about. It. The whole thing just bothers me. A lot of things bothering me today. I'm sorry, darling. What's wrong? Well, it's Scotty again, of course. I was over at the jail talking to him, and Heather came in. I told him time and again he must stay away from her. He just seems bound and determined not paying any attention to me. Lee, he's a big boy. I'm not speaking as a father here now. I'm strictly as an attorney who's concerned about his client. Oh, you mean that you're afraid, considering Heather's background, that she could jeopardize his chances of getting out? Oh, yeah. I don't trust her. I would not put it past her to do something just to, to make him look guilty, you know? Well, making somebody look guilty and proving that they're guilty are two entirely different things, so just don't worry about it. He's my son. I'm afraid I can't help him. I know. And then there's Scorpio. I wish I could get a reading on him. He's keeping such a tight rein on Scotty. That does not sound good. No, it isn't. He's new in the office, you know. He wants to look good. He'd like to solve this murder fast, make some points. Just afraid if he doesn't find the murderer, he'll try to build up a very heavy case against Scotty and Heather. As star-crossed lovers, you mean? Yeah, who conspired to kill the unwanted wife. Not exactly like Romeo and Juliet, is it? Hey, excuse me, Commissioner, but Dr. Mark Dante has been waiting to see you. What's he want? Well, he said he just remembered something that uh, might help in the Baldwin case. Uh, take this man back to his cell, will you? He needs to talk to you right away because he has to get back to the hospital. Look, Bert, I'm swamped. Can you do me a favor and talk to him for me? 
I have something very important I have to do right away. Sure, I'd be glad to. You really think Tom is your man? Well, he's in the running, but don't go placing any bets just yet. Hey, wait a minute. You know, we're running out of rooms for all your assistance. <laughs> in that case, we'll build a few extensions. Until I solve this case, no one gets released.